everybody. Perfect. Thank you. That's not funny. This week on the Transatlantic Rebels podcast, we're taking it back to the 80s, back to the future, back to the Karate Kid era, the original trilogy. But this time, it's YouTube Premium. It's updated. It's Karate Kid meets Cobra Kai. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, on this episode of the Transatlantic Rebels podcast, we are going to be talking about a series which hit YouTube. Uh, so YouTube are basically trying to launch their own proper streaming service, I guess, um, with original content. And they've had things over the years, but I think they're trying to ramp it up a bit now. And this is a series based off the original Karate Kid trilogy from the 1980s. And it's called Cobra Kai. So there are 10 episodes in this. Each episode is about 25 minutes long, 30 minutes long, around that kind of thing. So, um, I mean, just to give you a, a bit of background, I started watching it just for a laugh because I finally kind of like up, upgraded to uh, YouTube Premium just to give it a try. And uh, it was about eight o'clock and I thought, okay, let me just let me just hit play on this. And next thing I knew, it was one o'clock in the morning and I'd finished watching every single one of them. <laughs> And, and it was honestly, I mean, uh, we're in the spoiler free zone right now, but I will tell you that I think this has been my favorite TV event of the entire year thus far. Um, so we're currently in August. So I, I don't think I've enjoyed anything on TV. I know this was like through YouTube, whatever, but you know what I mean? I just enjoyed it so much. And um, I think Rashad watched it a while ago. So I'm I'm like, what, a couple of months behind everyone or co- I only just recently watched it. So but it's definitely worth doing a podcast on. And um, and so, Rashad, what are your spoiler, spoiler-free spoiler thoughts on Cobra Kai? Yeah. Yeah. Um, just a little background. Like, when I was a kid, me and my brother were diehard Karate Kid fans. So we watched, episode, we watched Karate Kid 1, Karate Kid 2, Karate Kid 3. Um, we loved, loved the first one. We really, really liked the second one. And the third one was kind of like, when you're a kid and you watch stuff like that, like at that time there, like you enjoy it for the time right there. But with a distance, you can see Karate Kid 3 was like the, you could throw that in the trash pretty much for the most part. Um, all right. <laughs> can't wait. Can't wait. Okay. <laughs> I can't wait. Okay. So the next Karate Kid was kind of like uh, with Hilary Swank. And then I guess the one, I never seen the one with uh, Jane Smith and, uh, and uh, Jackie Chan, the, re- the remake Karate Kid. So I never seen that one. So, um, so Karate Kid, pretty much the first one, the second one were like were like events in my household, and then the third one was kind of like, we liked it for the time right there, and then later on we kind of like, eh. but um, but for me, so when I saw, so when I heard first heard about the Karate Kid, the Cobra Kai show, I was kind of like, oh, I don't know, it's kind of cheesy. I was like, I thought it was gonna be one of things because the last time I seen Ralph Macchio do anything with the Karate Kid was this thing called I don't know if you guys have this thing called Funny or Die over there, um, and they kind of do parodies of like pop cultural stuff. And they kind of had it like where Daniel, where, where, where Robert Macchio was a boss of actor and everybody wants him to be Daniel Russo again. And they kind of like blends over to him being a karate kid again and stuff like that. So when Cobra Kai popped up, I was like, it's going to be a parody of karate kid again, blah, 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 whatever. So um, I kind of dismissed it. So on YouTube, they had the first two episodes like free on YouTube. I was like, okay, let me give it a shot. Then I kept seeing people like I trust and know sort of praising it. And I was like, really? Whatever. And then I watched the first two episodes. And because I never subscribed to YouTube Red, I had that 30-day free thing. So I started watching it, and I tore through that, like the same way you were talking about. I tore through it, and it's easily one of my favorite shows of the year. I would be shocked that it's not in my top five, if not three, at the end of the year. I think the only thing that it comes against for me when I'm watching TV shows this year right now is uh, Better Call Saul. So those, like, but that's a totally different beast right there. But for like pure entertainment value and a diehard Karate Kid fan... Um, I watched it, and it was interesting because I started watching these interviews with the guys who are the creators of the show, and they knew, like, this is one of the things where it's like, they're diehard Karate Kid fans, and when we get to spoiler things, like, you, you will get into stuff where you, you can clearly tell that these people were diehard Karate Kid fans, and they respected the, the, the property, and the thing that they did was they not only respected the property, but they also, without losing its flavor, they took it to a new direction. It's weird. It's like, they, they represented everything that was great about the Karate Kid. But at the same time, they opened up to a new generation. And everybody I talked to who loved the show outside of Twitter 
Like everybody pretty much says that um, that William Zabka pretty much stole, steals the show. Like as good as Ralph Macchio is, it was like a revelation for him. Like pretty much, there's people calling for diff- like different kind of awards, but we'll get into that later. But um, but for me, I was just blown away how good it was. And like, and there's I think there's a couple of things that make it great. Um, but I would just highly recommend uh, before getting to spoilers that uh, I it's like my highest recommendation of the TV show this year. Yeah, and just to follow on uh, before we do get into the spoiler things, just just a few kind of background things. First of all, it's actually executive produced by Will Smith, like the Will Smith, and uh, I mean, obviously he he must be just some huge Karate Kid head because he did the same for the Karate Kid reboot film with his son Jaden Smith. Um, another interesting thing is it's currently sitting at a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes, like literally hundred percent. Every single review is positive for this, which is, which is pretty rare. I think, I mean, especially like it's been out for three months or whatever. Um, and as you said, yep. Yeah, so, I mean, just to give you a bit of background on what it's about, you can, as Rashad mentioned, go and see the first two episodes for free on YouTube. Then after that, you have to pay for the service. I think, I don't know if you can still get like a, a free 30 day trial or not. Uh, uh, unless, unless they didn't do it already, they can still do it. Okay, fine. So if you've never done it before, you can do it, but I, I've done it. So I had to basically pay. Um, so yeah. And then, yes, yeah, so basically you've got, these are the original characters, Ralph Macchio and uh, William Zabka. Um, who played Johnny Lawrence and uh, Daniel LaRusso, um, other way around, sorry. Uh, and this is them like 34 years after the original film and they've grown up. It's not, you know, we're not getting to spoilers like in terms of what happens throughout the whole series, but, you know, in the first couple of episodes, it kind of, the first one revolves around William Zabka and the state that he's in right now. And I use that phrase like quite carefully because he's in a complete state. His life has not gone how he wanted it to ever since that moment um, where I'm going to assume that you've watched the original Karate Kid, or maybe I should just wait till the spoilers. Um, but then, and then the second episode is about Ralph Macchio. So basically, William Zabka is uh, not doing too well, whereas Ralph Macchio is doing really, really well. And um, and then their their kind of lives intertwine over the course of the ten episodes, and it's really fascinating. And I think the main thing is is that, like Rashad said, there was such. Uh, there was a fear going into this that it was going to be super cheesy and and basically just like kind of ruin the memory of of, of the original uh, trilogy, which everyone really loved. I know Rashad said the third one's trash. I don't I don't agree at all, to be honest. Um, but I mean, the first two are really, I guess, like the, the ones where it's at. Um, but I think I just can't believe how good this was like how unbelievable it was i think maybe like the last couple of episodes started to run out of steam a little bit but but like i mean i'm talking like like half a percent kind of thing like otherwise i just think it was so good um the other thing i did which is completely random i I used i mean karate kid if you talk about how much of an inspiration it was on me like after watching the original one um the first one when i was like God knows, I don't know, six or something. I literally started doing karate and I got pretty good. I almost got to black belt back. This is back in the 1980s. Um, so that's how much I loved this film, how inspirational it was, how much I took it into my life. And um, and so watching this was just, I, I was just in awe. I was in absolute awe. Um, so I tell you what, let's take a quick musical interlude and, uh, and then we'll come back with spoilers. <laughs> Okay, so we are back. So, Rashad, um, how much did you love this? Um, on a scale of uh, 1 to 10, 1 being trash and um, 10 being phenomenal, it's like a, at a 9, 9.5. Yeah, me too. I'd, I'd say 9.5. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't know what direction it was going to go in. And so now we're in spoilers, we can kind of, you know, go into it. So basically, William Zabka, Johnny Lawrence is just down and out. He's not doing well. He's relying on handouts from his stepfather um he's got a kid who he just barely sees who the kid must be about 15 16 i don't know something like that and um and his ex-wife is uh, is also not in a great way to be honest and then you've got ralph macchio i keep saying macchio but it's macchio because it's too macchio match match uh in italian two c's is usually no actually do you know what you might be right because he's that's how he pronounces his name, Ralph Macchio. That's how I was. Sorry. That's, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Um, he's doing much better. He basically owns the most successful car dealership in town. Um, he's got a beautiful wife. He's got two kids. The um, <clears throat> the kids are are a kind of contrasting case. Like he's got 
and an older daughter and uh, a younger son. The younger son's not really kind of, he's kind of a little shit, to be honest. Um, and, and, and like, you know, he, he's just glued to his screen constantly and ordering people around and spending money willy nilly. And he's very spoiled, clearly. But I guess that gives us scope to move through the seasons. And really, the main focus is, is on his daughter, uh, whose name is Sam. And she's about 16 as well, I think. So she, I think she's actually really good in this. Uh, I don't know the actress's name, but um, oh, Mary Mouser. Um, she's fantastic. So basically, he used to do karate with her when she was about eight. Then she gave it up. And um, and basically, William Zabka, I keep saying it, Johnny Lawrence. Let's call him Johnny Lawrence. So from the original Karate Kid film, his kind of his life has gone off the rails since then for a variety of different reasons. You know, he just drinks in the morning. His place is a tip. He's basically losing his job in the first episode. And he, he gets a final handout from his stepfather who's like, look, I really just never want to see you again. And he decides to actually open up with that money a karate dojo and uh, relaunch Cobra Kai, but in his own image, not not in the image of um, his former sensei, Reese, who was a freaking nutcase. Um, and and it's about his journey over the 10 episodes. It's about um, Daniel LaRusso's journey, how they come together. There's still that enmity between them. And then just as they keep kind of getting closer together to actually resolving things properly, things keep coming in their way. Um, mainly children. So uh, Johnny Lawrence takes on his own student, um, who's really good actually. He's, uh, um, his name is uh, Miguel Diaz, and, uh, and 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 Daniel Russo takes on, unbeknownst to him, the son of Johnny Lawrence as a student, as his sole student. So he doesn't open up a, a dojo, but he gives him a job and then and then lets this kid train karate. And um, I mean, okay, so what were the most interesting aspects of of the characters i guess to you first off no i mean the i think the, the, the biggest thing is just the fact that um it's it's kind of like when you watch the when you watch the original karate kid movies in a sense it's kind of like it's basically focused on um john uh, it's focused on daniel and uh mr miyagi so everybody else takes a back seat but the biggest thing that you do with a tv series is that you can open up to everybody else so the scope of it kind of opens up so johnny in the in the in the, in the um back in the 80s 90s like he's pretty much like stereoty- not stereotypical. I mean, you, I guess you could say because like between him and Biff Tannen, like they were like the two predominant like like quintessential bullies of like the eighties and nineties. So they kind of stood that way. And even for William Zabka, like he kind of got like Johnny defined his career so badly that he was kind of stuck being like the bad guy, the bad bully in um, just one of the guys, and he was stuck being that in um, Back to School with Rodney Dangerfield. So he kind of like had to kind of like dip away from acting for a period of time because he kept getting typecast as that guy. But with this show, what they did with Johnny is they kind of like gave him that. They finally gave him like a background that you didn't. They didn't change his character. He's still an asshole. He's still a douchebag. But you understand that you got the time to understand that why he's a douchebag, and you can sympathize with him. You spend as much time with Johnny as you do with Daniel, and you spend as much time with the kids as you do with either one of those. And I think that was, those are the things that a TV show can do that a movie can't do. So I think that's that, and the fact that I think the biggest thing with the show is. Um, it helps that uh, they run anywhere from 25 minutes to 30 minutes. And I think the last episode is maybe like 45 minutes. So it's like it cuts the fat a lot. It's not like an hour where they got to stretch a lot of things. So they have a, a specific goal each episode and they get to it. And there's 10 episodes. So it's maybe around like five to six hours total of a movie. I mean, not a movie, of a series. So it's very economical and it kind of gets to the point there's not really that much fat to be involved. And if there is any type of fat, it's usually more in time of like, of like, like humorous asides. But then even those things, like me watching as a screenwriter, like even those aside, like later on they come back to that as a moment of character. So I think most of the time, even with the fight scenes, like there's not like fight scenes just to have fight scenes like in so many other like martial arts shows. It's like those fight scenes, and sometimes episodes don't even have anything having to do with fight. It's just them just building up like his dojo or or Daniel LaRusso is taking him almost half the season before he even starts to consider getting back to martial arts again. So like they only activate martial arts when it's necessary. And when it serves the plot and not the other way around. That's a great point. And and before I forget it about William Zabka, um, I mean, it would be remiss to not mention How I Met Your Mother. Did you used to watch How I Met Your Mother? No, I never watched that. Okay, so basically, I mean, I mean, this is not really a spoiler, but he, he ends up coming as himself in the, I think, the last two seasons, eight and nine. Um, and, and it all stems from basically 
I think it's quite earlier on in in the series, actually. Um, Barney, who was played by Neil Patrick Harris, was the breakout character, Barney Stinson. And there's an episode where I, I think he might have come as a Halloween villain or something like that. And he comes as Johnny Lawrence. And everyone's like, oh, you know, you came as the villain. He's like, no, Johnny Lawrence is the hero of Karate Kid. He's literally the Karate Kid. He's not like Ralph Macchio, who Ma- Macchio, who know, doesn't know any real karate. This is a guy who's actually really good. And then he proceeds to explain through the episode exactly why he feels Johnny Lawrence was so hard done by. And it's alluded to in one of these episodes where I think I think where Johnny Lawrence is telling Miguel, look, this is what happened to me. He just came and just poured water over me. I was minding my own business. And then he, you know, he sucker punched me in front of my girlfriend. And, and, and these are all the things that, that basically I think Neil Patrick Harris in How I Met Your Mother referenced. And that was one of the real renaissance points, just that, that earlier episode. And then William Zabka got actually as played himself uh, and quite a crucial role in the last kind of um, couple of seasons. And I think for a lot of people, myself included, that put him completely back on the map because I hadn't seen him. I don't think I'd seen him like actually acknowledging him um, since the original film. So it was fascinating. It was a throwback, but it was a clever kind of reintroduction to Hollywood for him, like on a wider scale. Um, And and that is clearly that has clearly influenced the template of Cobra Kai because there are things literally from what Barney says in there that have been referenced in this and it sets it up so nicely. It's it's brilliant. And I I don't know. It's just, I think, I think the main thing from this is just the family interplay is really well handled. And so subtly, even things like Daniel LaRusso's mum comes in one of the later episodes, like the one who originally played his mum in, in the trilogy. Um, and and then she doesn't get on with Daniel LaRusso's wife. Normally in this, you know, it'd be all like happy clappy, blah, blah, blah. But they can't stand each other and very specific reasons. And they're constantly having these digs at each other. And like, you know, I have a wife. She has a mother-in-law who's my mother. And I can see these things. I'm like, oh, my God. I was just like watching through my fingers. And it's so accurate. It's, it's And so there are these elements of comedy. It's very funny. There is sort of, as you said, it's a great point. The action is only activated on a, on a you know, on a thoughtful level when it needs to be done. And there is drama as well. And these things kind of mix into this intoxicating blend. It's it's just really well handled and it's so well paced as well. Um, how about some of the younger characters? How, like who stood out for you? Um, for, I mean, the the most screen time went to, for because he was there from the beginning a little bit. Uh, Zola, uh, Miguel Diaz, Zolo. I don't know if his name's right. Zolo? Um, Mariduena. Yeah, but I'm trying to get the first name right, but there's no, but there's no, um, no pronunciation on here, like on on uh, uh, Wikipedia. Like you know, sometimes they have like the um, how you yeah. pronounce it, but it's not. On I there. think it would be Zolo, though. Yeah, yeah. Zolo. Yeah. Um, I thought all three of the the, the kids dance stood out. I mean, later on with with uh, with Robbie, played by Tanner Buchanan, like he was a jackass Johnny kind of character at the beginning. He kind of like eases up. He eases up into the Daniel Larusso character. It's weird because it's like a remix of everything. It's almost like. It's like you think that that Miguel's going to be the it was, from the beginning of the show. It's like okay, he's going to be the Daniel Larusso, but with Johnny as a trainer. But then he winds up becoming a Johnny, and then you see Robbie thinking he's going to be the, the the Johnny the whole way through, and then he winds up becoming a Daniel. And then you have Samantha Larusso, which is kind of like I, I don't know if they're going to do the, the the love triangle thing next season, but they're implying it this season, where it's like they both have elements. It's almost like she's like. Um, What's her name's character in the original one? Elizabeth Shoe's character, Allie's character, and then she like she sees she sees both Johnny and Daniel each of one of those characters at the same time in a sense. But she never really saw the um the 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 Johnny side of uh of Robbie because she didn't really meet him until like he started getting on board with Daniel. But I think if you want to talk about the the, the two out of the three kids, I think they're all good. But I would say my order would be it would be uh, Miguel, then it'd be Samantha, then it'd be Robbie. But I think they all are set up for like strong plot lines next season. Yeah, I would agree with pretty much all of that, to be honest. Uh, and it is interesting how they kind of change the narrative arcs. Um, in terms of other characters, uh, I mean, I, I think I think some of the friends of Miguel were actually really funny and and kind of like they were slightly underused as it went on. Um, but or, or they kind of. Who is it? That one? What's her name? Uh, Aisha. Yeah. She she was originally um, Sam's best friend, and then Sam starts hanging out with these cheerleadery type type girls. So I'm sorry, I don't know how to describe them, but like the kind of mean girls kind of thing, right? And uh, and then 
so she ends up becoming good friends with Miguel. And I can see her potentially becoming a love interest for him because they kind of started to slowly hint at it, uh, unless I'm reading too much into it. Um, but I, I just think it was very fascinating the way that um, the, the Cobra Kai dojo came together and got more students and, and his complete lack of knowledge about anything. Like he's like, what's Facebook? You know, <laughs> go to Cobra Kai dot com and all this kind of stuff. You know, it, it's a bit on the nose, but it is quite funny. It's kind of like Eminem, you know, like who knows nothing about Facebook or technology and stuff like that, like playing it up a bit. Um, and and I, I don't know. I, I just think. I think I think the main thing is is that they handled everything really well. It had the kind of twists and turns of a soap opera, um, but without the sort of ultimate cheese. And I can imagine that this would play really well to a younger crowd, to be honest, as a reintroduction for something that's like thirty four years ago. Yeah, I mean they're not going to care about that. They they probably would have watched the the, the Karate Kid with Jaden Smith. So you've never watched that. Um, I mean it's really funny. I think that's a really good film. I know it got slated by a lot of people just by you know for the virtue of existing in the first place or like having the audacity to remake such a classic but actually it's one of those films where if you just watch it a couple of times you realize it's done really really well like there are some cheesy bits and they have to cooperate with the chinese government and blah 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 blah, blah. but but actually i think it's it's very very good but this i mean this was like okay awesome like you can watch that original trilogy and then come back to this uh, go straight to this and then just cut everything out if you want to um I mean, what else? What are what other thoughts do you have? Like that that might because obviously you've watched interviews with the creators and stuff like that. I haven't done any of that because I only just finished watching this a couple of days ago. What what other interesting tidbits are there? I mean, basically, like they they had the, it was a, they had the, it took a while for them to talk both William Zabka and um that Ralph Macchio into doing the show because they were like because Ralph Macchio was a, was even more bigger because he was like if you're going to do this. You got to make it worth my time. I, I just, I'm not going to do this for some nostalgia kick. It's got to be. It's pretty much got to be good. And I and, and the fact that and and it's, and it's a big part. It's interesting because when I watch the interviews with him and William Zabka, Ralph Macchio and him, sometimes it seems like Ralph Macchio takes over the conversation. And William Zabka just sits there and chill. Because I guess Ralph Macchio, the bigger like the bigger star at this. I mean, I mean, if you look at the history of Karate Kid, it's Ralph Macchio and Pat Morita. Those are the two guys that define Karate Kid. So I'm pretty sure like. Just I'm just theorizing as a, a just just as a as a person who watches like the industry and stuff like that. I'm assuming like they would give more room for Rob Macchio to talk to sell the show. But then when you watch the show and when you, when you see people talking about the show, most people talk about William Zabka being like the standout. And I think he's the guy going. F- I think if I'm looking at the show and seeing how the writers are, I seem like the writers have much more fun writing um, William Zabka's character, Johnny Lawrence, than they do Daniel Russo. They don't skimp on Daniel. Don't get me wrong. And he's a, he's like the bread and butter because he's pretty much Daniel LaRusso. He's an iconic cinematic character. But it's this weird shift that that Johnny may be, if they do what they do with the show next season, um, he might be just as much in this era as it would be like Daniel LaRusso back then or maybe even share the spotlight with them. But I think as much as I was watching those interviews with them, it's pretty much their big giant thing is they were very careful not to they want to is they want to do nostalgia like but they that cannot be the foundation of the show. If I'm gonna, if we're going to do something that's going to be reminiscent of something, then it has to serve character. That's their big thing. If we're going to assert something like 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 Robbie and Dela Russo doing the training in the um in the forest stuff like that, then it has to be character. I'm, we're not we're not going to pop into something nostalgic just for the sake of nostalgia. And they and they said that's the biggest thing that goes wrong with a lot of like nostalgia reboots is like they just throw you the images and the characters without any kind of like storytelling or care for the characters. Um, so the interviews with, if you were ever watching interviews with them, you could tell that they were fans, but they also wanted to show respect where they wanted to kind of bring it back to that level. And the interesting thing about it is, is that Netflix turned down the show before. No. Yes. Why? I don't know. I do not know. That's the, that's one of the biggest, you would think with stranger things and everything. I would have threw, I would have threw money at that, especially if they showed me like some kind of proof of concept that was like that. I'd have been like, "What can you? What could you lose by not throwing that show on there?" If that show, I'll say this much: I think the only thing holding that show back is that there's many people outside of of, of like who's 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 aware of these streaming services. I think they don't even think of YouTube like that. YouTube is still trying to find their way, and Karate Kid's like the most popular thing at that point. But I think if it was on Netflix, it would be like the work. I feel like this. It would have been like Stranger Things. The word of mouth would have been huge on Netflix. 
Not 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 to say that the, that the word of mouth is not good right now, but I think it would have been one of those like water cooler things where everybody, like, you see Cobra Kai? Oh my god! And it just flew out there. It was ridiculous. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm a shareholder in Google, so I, I and I use Android and stuff like that. So I'm I'm very kind of like au fait with what they do and and things like that. So you're right. I mean, to be honest, this is their biggest show on YouTube Premium. Or, or YouTube, where well, used to be YouTube, but basically Google do these things every two years. They change their mind about something, and then you know, okay, now it's going to be like YouTube Music instead of Google Play Music, and then you know, like the messaging apps that every two years they just do something else. They, they always screw something up, and they change their mind very quickly about things. So that's why I think for the longevity of this show, I think it's a shame that it's on YouTube um, Premium at all. Um, but but interestingly, like you said, like the first two episodes are free on YouTube, and the stats. I mean. I think the first one had over 40 million views. Yeah. And, and that's not to say, you know, obviously I don't know the stats that everyone sat through the whole thing or whatever, but I'm sure a lot of people would have actually sat and watched it probably because it's free. You know, that's like the free YouTube thing. Um, and, and I mean, after that second episode, I was like, I was like umming and ahhing and I was like, no, nah, fuck that. I'm, I am going to watch this right now. <laughs> literally logged on yeah and like paid the amount for the premium thing and i was just like like that's what prompted me it was episode three i was like i have to know what happens you know so i, I can imagine that they would have done all right outside but then there's nothing else like you said there's there's nothing really else on youtube um to justify the price as a show uh, which one to justify the price of even buying yeah exactly yeah. i mean what other shows are there you know um so i think that's a bit of a shame um but but in a way, you know, it could be it could be a good thing for YouTube to kick themselves up the ass a bit, basically, because this is such a good show. It's so so good, and I'm sure it'll come out on DVD at some point. It has to because, it, and then that it might get kind of an even wider audience. Then, um, okay. I mean, do you have any final thoughts on it? No. The only thing I hope they would do is is that before the second season comes out, they just throw that first season out there for free and push that as hard as they can, and then or maybe even do something like I mean, I guess that's that's going against the grain for um. I, I, I'll say this to you too. If if I was them, I would do this. You, I would, I would, I would just before the second season comes out, you do this, do this marketing thing where you release the the first season like, for like for like a week and go okay, you can watch Cobra Kai for a week like that, and then kind of like do some kind of like pricing thing where like before Cobra Kai comes out, you just have all these shows, get these quality shows on lock. So once people like want, you want to buy like for example like it's a five dollar like like limited time only, you can get you can get like the service for five dollars. For like a month, if you watch Cobra Kai too, and then have all these other shows ready to go after Cobra Kai, and then just have that, and then build it from there. Because I think if, if you if you have Cobra Kai season two leading in, and there's a word of mouth like you said of DVD, and you thought like a free week of like just watching the whole season stuff like that, just make sure you market it correctly, and then have like five or six shows ready to go after Cobra Kai. As soon as that show ends, just, just tell people why this should be a viable option for you to purchase it's gonna be difficult right now you got hulu you got um netflix you got disney season service coming up you're gonna get some big competition and for your ten dollars and you got to justify that ten dollar cost i completely agree uh everything you've just said and the, the thing is is that i mean youtube as as a service it's all really interesting because disney are going to come out with theirs next year and actually with netflix i'm a netflix shareholder as well and um and i've recently just become like I, I feel confused by what's on Netflix now. Um, I mean, pretty soon we're going to stop satellite TV, uh, like in in the next couple of months, and we're just going to quit it altogether and just relying on, rely on like you know Amazon Prime and Netflix, and and we also have like Now TV, which kind of it has different things like films or sports or this or that. So we'll do that on an ad hoc basis. But Netflix, I feel just like there's just too much content on there and i know they're spending more and more and more but you know sometimes less is more i don't know what's good on netflix anymore and i don't i don't follow sources that tell me what's good on netflix anymore apart from people on twitter who you know if someone on twitter shouts loud enough about a certain thing like you right now you keep going on about better call Saul, and i've already watched breaking bad so i'm like i already know the character okay so like if you keep shouting about it long enough i'll be like okay fine i'll watch it but otherwise, like, I just don't know what the hell's on there. I mean, the films are just trash. They're, they're, oh, their yes. own films are trash. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to count Annihilation because they kind of bought that. But um, but in terms of their own, I mean, their own is just dreadful. It's like, why bother? Why spend, why spend like, 10, 20 mil on this nonsense, you know? I think they need to do fewer things better. Because 
they really need it. I think they really need it right now. And as as a shareholder, I like I'm you know I'm being selfish here. I want my money to go up, right? And and I think they need to just start paying more attention because Disney are going to come out of the gates, man. When, they, when their streaming service, th- this is basically Bob Iger's big, big, huge project before he leaves now. This is the last thing he wants to do as the CEO of Disney. And he's not going to screw it up. That guy does not screw up things properly. He's going to do it properly. So um, he sees the so shark, yeah, he I sees mean, the blood of the water. He's, he's a guy that sees their, their weakness right there. It, it is. It's a massive weakness. You know, I think I think Netflix will be fine overall because internationally they're just going to keep keep funding things on a on a local level, which I think is a really smart strategy. But but they just need to stop making so much bullshit that gets lost in the mix. Like I just don't. I don't even know when I go onto Netflix now. I'm so confused. I'm just like I don't. I don't know I, if I just want to sit and watch a show. Like I mean, the last thing I'll say is like Cobra Kai. Watching it from like. 8 p.m. till 1 in the morning, all in one go, gave me the feeling of last year, Master of None season two, which is, I did exactly the same thing. I think start, I started watching it at 7.30 and finished at about 12.30 because it was so, so good. And and this gave me that feeling. And and something like Master of None is enough to kind of get its head above the parapet. But other things might be really good on Netflix and I have no fucking idea, basically. So at the very least, I think YouTube should put out at least one great, like, TV show a month. <laughs> at least do that. I mean, come on, you know, and, yes. and, like, market it properly. That's all you have to do right now. Um, yeah. How much did they pay for this, by the way? Do you, do you know? I have no clue. I didn't talk yeah, about that. I'd be that, interested but, to know. Yeah, but like you said, it's like, that's that's the goal right now. The same thing with Netflix. I know we turned this into Cobra Kai or something else. But like I said, with all these streaming services, you have to go quality over quantity. Because if, if you keep set, if you keep feeding people crap, the people are not going to take your, your movie seriously. You're not going to take it seriously. Nope. Wise words. Uh, okay, I think we'll wrap it up then. Um, so don't forget to follow us on uh, Facebook at Transatlantic Rebels Podcast and on Twitter at T underscore Rebels. So we will catch you next time. Peace.